today we are going to discuss about the isolating mechanism in evolution. Isolating mechanism. Isolating is the separation of the members of a single population into a subpopulation so that the genetic integrity of the subpopulation can be maintained. So isolating means you are separating particular person from a the population that is called isolating. So you are isolated. Now we are in the period of corona. What is that? We have to isolate ourselves. Okay. To control the corona cases. Like that a particular person or a particular population in a particular population a group of members has to be isolated. That is from a large population you are separating a small group population which is also called a subpopulation. Why you are doing this? To maintain the genetic integrity of the subpopulation. Closely related species living in same area do not breed together. They are prevented by isolating barriers. So closely related species they shouldn't breed which are belong to the same area they shouldn't breed. So they have to be separated and it is acting as an isolating barrier. An isolating barrier is any evolved character of two species that stops them from interbreeding. So isolating barrier is going to evolve. From the isolating barrier any new uh, that is new species can be evolved. from so Because of that what they are doing they are going to stop the stop uh, the two species that is an, any evolved character of the two species two species will come because of the isolating bar barrier so this can be stopped that is you are going to stop the same species interbreeding that is the two species interbreeding several kinds of isolating barriers are distinguished so there are several types or uh, of isolating barriers the most important distinction is prezygotic and postzygotic isolation. So the prezygotic and postzygotic one is the distinct one. That is distinction. So prezygotic mechanism includes those which prevent two species from coming into contact. So prezygotic. Prezygotic means before zygote formation. That is you can able to prevent the fusion of male and female gametes. So that is called prezygotic mechanism. So this includes ecological, seasonal, etiological, and morphological. So the prezygotic mechanism involves ecological, seasonal, etiological, and morphological. Postzygotic mechanism or those which act after fertilization, they include hybrid sterility, hybrid in inviability, and hybrid. Breakdown. So after the fertilization the zygote is formed. So it can be stopped with the help of hybrid sterility will be there. Hybrid in inviability it cannot able to withstand the environmental condition and hybrid breakdown is also there. So they are called as post zygotic mechanism. And we are going to see this pre and post zygotic mechanism in that the first one is ecological isolation or habitat isolation. The members of the same population may be separated from one another by a differences in their habitat. So the members in the same population that is in a population the same members can be separated from one another based on their habitat how they are living where they are living. So they are same in they are same they are in the same population only but they can be separated using the behavior that is based on the habitat, ecological condition, they can be deferred. Okay, for example, Rana, Areolata, occupies burrows, ducks by the mammals and tortoise during the day and breeds in grassy shallow ponds whereas Rana Gairoli breeds in deep waters that is Rana Areoli. So they are seen in the burrows which are done by that is which are dug by the mammals and tortoise. So they had uh, they had dig the that is dug the burrows. In that burrow Rana Areolata go that is during daytime they will be there. 
and where they they took where, where the reproduction the breeding uh, starts means in grassy shallow ponds and the another species rana gairoli they breed in the deep waters both are frog species only the rana areolata is seen in the burrows that was digged by mammals and tortoise okay and they they live in the burrows in the day and for breeding they go to shallow that is grassy shallow ponds and rana gairoli breed in the deep waters due to the difference in the habitat the two species are able to maintain their respective species identities so because of the habitat so one live in the burrow one live in the water deep water and the one for breeding it has to move on to the uh, that is shallow ponds and one, another one it has to move on to the deep waters so based on this differences in the habitat that is on the based on the ecological ecologically they can be isolated and they are producing the individuals that is species identity based on the habit okay habitat next seasonal isolation in this type of isolation the differences in the breeding season prevent prevents the interbreeding so due to the difference in the breeding season that is reproducing season that is for that is mating season okay the breeding season is nothing but the mating season so this prevents interbreeding example toad that is buffo americana toads zoological name is buffo americanus breeds much yearly in the spring season so they breed in the spring season and buffo floleria floleria breeds very late in the season okay the same season only the spring season only the toad the toad common name for both it is toad in toad the buffo america americanus they breed yearly in spring but buffo fowleria breed in the spring season at the late late very late that is completion of the spring season they starts breeding so based that is the seasonal based on the season that is spring season after the spring season what will come the winter that is the next season the late in the season it going to finish so based on the season the isolation takes place so they are able to maintain their species identity because of the differences in the breeding season so both are the same species only toad only common name is toad the um, buffo americanus and buffo fowleria but on what basis they are separated by the breeding season okay sexual behavior or etiological isolation or behavioral isolation so prevents mating due to difference in the sexual behavior so based on the sexual behavior the ma- the mating is prevented the species are not separated from one another either in time or in space so the species are not separated with one another in time or in space the mating calls of two closely related species of frogs hyla very versicolor that is gray tree frog and hyla femoralis is fine wood tree frog are different which prevents interbreeding so they took two closely related species of the frog hyla versicolor which is a gray tree frog and hyla femoralis fine wood tree frog so they are prevented that is these are separated based on the sexual be- be- breeding and they are not this is this hyla uh, versicolor and hyla femoralis are the same species but they won't interbreed among themselves and they are separated with the help of the sexual behavior or behavior isolation morphological isolation or mechanical isolation morphological means external this type of isolation is due to the difference in their external genitalia that is seen in two different species so based on the external genitalia which is seen in the two different species okay that is the morphology you you are viewing the particular item and you, you are you, that is particular uh, organ and you are saying it is different from each other. a uh, species okay the size difference between the toad species buffo cucarus 
and buffo valley cells prevents their interbreeding so based on the size the two species the two are uh, toad species only they are differ differ that is buffo cucarus and buffo valley cells are same but based on the size they have been differ different and because of the size they that is the the uh, preventing they are preventing interbreeding they won't prevent with each other so based on the morphology of the size and the genital part they, they are isolated physiological isolation through mating may occur the gametes are prevented from fertilization due to the mechanical or physiological factors so the mat mating that is the mating can occur and but the gametes that is the fertilization the fusion must not takes place so the fusion is prevented with the help of mechanical or physiological factors example the sperm of drosophila vinis survive only for about a day when introduced into the sperm receptacle of drosophila americana while the sperms of uh, drosophila americana live for a longer time so the drosophila venilis sperms will live for only one day when what even it was in, inserted into the sperm receptacle receptacle of drosophila americana so this they may ask in your one mark as well as in your neat exam and the sperms of drosophila americana live for a longer time so the duration so based on the duration you can separate this two species that is the physiological isolation cytological isolation the fertilization does not takes place due to the difference in the chromosome numbers between the two species the bull frog rana catasibiana and grouper frog rana areolata so the fertilization will not takes place that is the fusion of gametes won't take place because the chromosome number vary between these two frogs that is rana catasibiana that is bull frog the common name of bull frog they will ask uh, rana catasibiana and gopher frog it is rana areolata so they may ask the common names of the frog or the zoological name of the frog and they will ask you to write that answer okay through the cytological isolation that is the chromosome number we can also isolate the two species and they can that is after that is the fertilization mustn't takes place doesn't takes place hybrid inviability in this type the sperm enters the egg fertilization occurs and embryo develops into adult but it dies before reaching maturity so sperm enter into the egg fertilization also takes place embryo also develop into adult but at maturity what happens it dies the organism will die that is the organism is die so in certain fishes frogs beetles and even if fertilization takes place between two species due to genetic incompatibility they do not live a, any surviving offspring so everything will takes place that is fertilization will takes place fusion of the gametes will takes place that is called fertilization and embryo is developed and it becomes the adult but what happens at a sudden it will die so that is called hybrid in inviability the two species must if they are crossed the the pro, the result will be zero because it won't survive so this was seen in some of the uh, fishes frogs beetles okay and due to genetic incompatibility they cannot able to comparable they cannot able to connect with the with the genetic makeup because of that the hybrid viability inviability takes place hybrid sterility in this type hybrids are formed due to interspecific crosses but they are sterile due to the failure of the chromosome to segregate separate normally during meiosis example mule a interspecific cross between horse and a donkey so hybrid sterility so the hybrids are formed but they are sterile they won't give rise to any young ones give birth to young ones okay like that an example mule so the mule is a cross between horse and a donkey so the, the when the, the horse and donkey is crossed the mule organism was come 
that is the mule organism is produced but this mule is a sterile one it is called hybrid sterility next hybrid breakdown the f1 hybrids are viable and fertile but f2 hybrids may not inviable or sterile so while the uh, that is hybridization takes place in f1 they will get a fertile ones fertile and viable ones but when it is crossed again again in f2 generation the hybrid inviability that is invi inviable it won't withstand and uh, once it won't withstand means it will die or sterile so this is called hybrid breakdown hope you understand the topic if you have any doubts post your doubts in the comment box if you want to watch the video in tamil i have given the link in the description box give a thumbs up share and subscribe to science easy tech channel